Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and whoa, $3.3 trillion. We haven't had a lot of new money come in in the last 24 hours, but for some reason XRP decided to go crazy. Well, we know what that reason is in this case. It's because Gary Gensler announced which day he's going to step down. And XRP, more than any other digital asset, decided to go nuts. We're at 148 right now. I wanted to show you the return rates. You're not going to hear about this on CNBC. In seven days, XRP is up 70%, which is more than their precious Solana or Ethereum or Bitcoin. 177% in the last 30 days, which is more than their precious Solana and Ethereum and Bitcoin. And then um, for the quarter, 142%, which is more than their precious Solana, Ethereum, and Bitcoin. But they're not going to tell you that. Now, on the year, those are still, um, uh, well, not all of them. Looks like only Solana and um, Binance coin maybe are above them in the top six. But you're not going to hear any of that. You're not going to hear any of that stuff on CNBC because it's not, it, XRP is still not a part of their narrative. Now that might change imminently because all of the things that have held XRP back are in the process of being removed. And remember, all the price movement in the last 24 hours was, was just because Gary announced what we already knew he was gonna do. What about when the, the Ripple case is dismissed, dropped, or settled? Which is what we all think is going to happen, but what what happens? What does the price do then? Uh, I'll find out because I'll be owning it then. I'm not selling anything. XRP. This is a crypto bull. XRP about to break year-long resistance. Next price targets to be 196 and 384, which is about the that's about the up, the all-time high. Crypto Wizard. XRP bull run targets. XRP has broken out of the six-plus-year macro structure. The bull run has begun. Targets two seventy four fifty eight dollars. Oof! I like the sound of that. And then it's fun to get some of the reactions about Gary Gensler leaving from uh, from different people in the drama. Brad Garlinghouse said, "This Thanksgiving, I'm thankful for," and he tweeted, he retweeted Gary Gensler's stepping down tweet. Then Stuart Alderati says, "And scene like we're." Almost like we've been watching a movie. Is that what he means? He also tweeted this this morning. I call it not a security opening bid $5 million. Serious inquiries only. John Deaton says, Dear Gary, on behalf of the entire crypto community. And he flicks to Gary the bird. <laughs> Tom Emmer, who declared that a new day would be coming, says, Good riddance. I didn't realize the new day would be coming this late. David Schwartz. I'm gonna miss him, which is kind of, which is what Bill Murray said when um, I think he said that in Ghostbusters when the guy the redheaded guy was being sent to jail. Check this out: nine trillion dollar Charles Schwab to get into the spot Bitcoin and crypto ETF sales. That's big. And then we had uh, this scoop. You know, this, the former CFTC chair, Christian Carley, who I've met a couple of times, he, um, uh, everybody thought maybe he was going to be the next SEC chairman. He said he, he was not going to do that. Now, um, he is being eyed for the, being the crypto czar. Crypto dad has emerged as a leading contender, becoming the first ever crypto czar possible new administration position. Trump transition team is weighing. Um, then Now, this is a lady, I like the way she talks, but she's been floated for being the next SEC chairman. And from the way she's talking, I'd be all for it. Make the SEC great again. Make crypto great again. Under President Trump, transformative change starts on day one. SEC must restore trust, engage with the industry, and end regulation by enforcement. It's time to knock down needless obstacles, remove burdens, clarify crypto rules and promotion innovation. 
uh, promote innovation, protect investors in our place on the world financial stage, bring crypto back to the U.S. Now, by the way, I'm sitting here just like you all are, and I'm staring at prices, and whoa, let me tell you what. And I'll t let me tell you this, too. You know, many of you think it's hard to hold your XRP and stuff like that in the bear markets, and many people leave during bear markets. But the real hard time to hold XRP is when the bulls are running because you're sitting there asking yourself, is this the day that it turns around? In this particular case, I'm going to be a lot more comfortable because I know of all the, there's so many positive things out in front that I know I would be a lunatic to sell my XRP now, and I will not be selling now. And that's the fact, Jack. Now, um, this is um, Kevin O'Leary was on um, with uh, on Fox News, and he's talking about um, the czar role and some different crypto-related things. You with what that could be and what a Treasury Secretary would be like and what the delay might be is none other than Shark Tank investor and O'Leary Ventures chair, Kevin O'Leary. Kevin, what's the problem filling this seat? It seems to be really bedeviling uh, the Trump team. Uh, Treasury is a very big deal because they work in cohort with, with the commerce and we've got to get someone here that balances the economy and understands it's not all about large companies because the Chips and Science Act, the Infrastructure Act and all the government support during the pandemic did not go down to family businesses in America, which creates 62 percent of the jobs. So we got to get someone in there that understands that. My vote is Haggerty. He understands that. I also know him. So, of course, I'm going to be an advocate for him. But this is a crucial position. Big deal, a really big deal. Right. Uh, do you think Wall Street's going to embrace the Trump philosophy, the tariffs, and some of the things? When you pick up the phone, are they excited about this? Yes, they are excited, specifically against China. Tariffs are balanced. You've already got to deal with Canada and Mexico and our European partners. We have equivalent tariffs. That's okay. It's China we're at economic war with. I'm a huge advocate for really turning up the heat there and getting them to the table so they're part of the rules that they agreed to play by in 1999 when they, the, when they joined the WTO. These guys cheat, they steal, everybody knows it. It's time to, to really hold them accountable. So the cryptos are that the president's presenting, no doubt about it. He went to Silicon Valley, he was impressed with what he heard and what he saw. And he's looking at a crypto czar, Brian Brooks, Brian Armstrong, two people whose names come up to help him pick somebody or pick themselves. Your thoughts about this? Yeah, I agree with him. I mean, Brian uh, is the point base. He's being sued by Gensler right now. His company's under litigation from the SEC. We've got to stop these shenanigans because this is a technology that affects all 11 sectors of the economy. It provides efficiency and digital payment systems, and we have to be competitive worldwide. We need a czar here, and we need to start making decisions. Is it Ethereum a commodity, or is it a security? Pick one and go with it. I don't care which one it is, but we've got to at least pick it. We haven't done that yet. 40 seconds. Your thoughts about Doge writing an editorial in the Wall Street Journal today talking about their approach and they're going to have a channel and inform America with their cutting. Can they get two trillion out of this budget? Yes, they can. And why wouldn't you want Doge? All it's saying is let's be transparent when we make economic decisions. Stop letting bureaucrats do it because we sent our representatives to Congress. I'll give you an example. We stopped shipping natural gas to Germany and they're freezing in the dark. Why do we do that? Some bureaucrat decided that. Congress should decide. I love this idea. Transparency for the people. What's wrong with that? Nothing. And I, I would, would love to see us just maximize oil and gas. Some other good news, the XL pipeline, as soon as President Trump takes over, they're going to start get out their ratchet set and start putting it together again from Canada. Kevin O'Leary, thanks so much. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Oh, I wanted to show you this clip right here. This is Payments Canada. Watch this clip. They're talking about um, they're talking about Ripple in this clip. Watch. If you look at Santander's announcement, what they've done is connected Ripple to uh, Apple Pay, and then allow employees to send money. So they don't have to worry about the complexities of AML and you know what happens if a payment doesn't get. But they're just step by step testing this out. Mm -hmm. Then they'll start taking it to selective customers. So, so when, then we're starting to talk about different types of pilots. It's not a Ripple pilot, but it's a customer pilot using our technology. Okay, so um, we're going to go into DAIXRP.com. And 
What we're going to, I'm going to talk about, there's more um, XRP stuff. I, I think I'm going to talk about the, there's a few more things left on the XRP Unleashed Rigged from the Start documentary. Um, I heard that, that the, the sales of the documentary have been going crazy the last 24 hours. And so I'm going to show you some of the behind the scenes that went on there and uh, interesting stuff. I'm the digital asset invest investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family that away we go.